Hello everyone, in this video we'll be covering an experimental node that Epic has fairly recently added to the engine that is quickly becoming a complete foot IK solution for locomotion systems. You'll notice that if I stand on this slope, the character is playing animations meant for standing flat on the ground. And that just does not look right at all. Additionally, we may encounter situations where the feet slide despite um, any sort of stride warping implementation, as it might not always be able to keep up or completely reduce foot sliding. The foot placement node can handle slope warping, which will allow the feet to align properly on sloped or uneven surfaces such as where one foot is going to be higher than the other, and it'll additionally handle foot locking somewhat automatically, depending on how we set up the node. You'll need to have the animation warping plugin enabled for your project, though you should already have it enabled if you've been following along as it is required to be enabled to make use of stride orientation and slope warping. In the base animation blueprint, before we apply our leg IK, I'm going to create a new foot placement node. I'm going to plug it in directly before our leg IK node and provide it with the information that it needs, primarily two leg definitions. Or, well, it would need more if your character doesn't have two legs, but ours does. So that's what we'll be doing. It requires the forward kinematic foot bone for a leg. I'll start with the right leg, so I'll go ahead and search foot and choose the right foot. It needs the IK foot bone, so I'll search IK foot and choose IK foot right. And it needs the ball bone, so I'll search ball and choose ball right. The number of bones in the limb setting is at a default of 2, and that is going to be correct for the default. And this node, very much like stride warping and orientation warping, has two modes. A manual mode and a graph mode. We'll start on graph mode to see the effect of the foot placement node in practice. But then we will switch over to manual because I believe it results in the highest fidelity usage of the foot placement node. I'll go ahead and set up the left leg now. So foot left, IK foot left, and ball left. I almost forgot we need to provide it with the IK foot root bone as well as the pelvis bone. With that done, we'll compile and save. There are a variety of settings that we can tweak, but that is all that we need to observe the foot placement node in effect before we perform our tweaks to the node and its settings. If I move over to this slope, we can see that the animation is being warped. Though I do see some issues with the left foot, Ah, I accidentally clicked on the forward kinematic foot bone instead of the inverse kinematic foot bone, so it was not set properly. With that fixed, let's look at it on a slope again. And now the character is being aligned to the slope properly. If we stand on a surface where one foot is higher than the other, that is accounted for as well. Now I'm going to open the console and turn on the debug draw for the foot placement using this command here. And I'm also going to go into slow motion. Now, as I begin moving, you'll see squares that shift from red to green. These squares are red when the feet are locked to the ground and green when the feet are unlocked. 
So what the foot placement node will do is it'll try to determine when a foot is locked to the ground based on its speed through the world, and it will lock it when that speed falls below a certain threshold. In graph mode, it is looking at the foot speed in the world, meaning that as we turn, it does not lock the feet as the feet are moving because the character is rotating. If we switch into manual mode, we can get more precise control over when the feet do and do not lock. This helps to greatly reduce foot sliding, especially if used in combination with stride warping. Back in our main animation graph, we can see that there are a variety of settings that we can affect, such as the speed threshold, where when a foot is under it, the foot is considered to be planted, a distance to ground threshold, which also affects foot planting, a lock type, where we can determine if the foot is allowed to rotate, and if it is allowed to rotate, then we can determine whether or not it rotates around the ball joint or the heel joint. And we have a variety of other settings here. You can hover over each of these yourself, read the descriptions, and modify them to experiment around with the different settings and find what works best for you. That's how I learned to somewhat use this node effectively and I think it's the best way to learn exactly how these settings apply to the placements of the feet and the movement of the character. I personally like to enable the adjust heel before planting setting. However, the rest of these settings are due to personal preference, but also can be dependent on the nature of the movement of the feet in the animations that you are using. So again, I just recommend you play around with them and explore to try to get a feel for how they affect the placements of the feet for the character. And these settings are subject to change as the node is still in an experimental phase of development. However, I've found that it already works extremely well as a one and all IK solution for locomotion. I'm now going to switch the plant speed mode from graph to manual. You'll notice that for our leg definitions array, for each leg, there is a speed curve name value and a disable lock curve name. We can supply curve names from animations to the foot placement node and get a truer representation of what the intended movement of an animation is separate from the in-world movement of a character where the animation might not always match up with the placement of the foot in the world due to speed and rotational difference between the character's motion and the animated motion. With the foot placement node set to manual, I'll go ahead and navigate over into one of our animation folders with animations we'd want to apply foot placement to. I'll go ahead and select our jog loop animations, right click, and go to the animation modifiers option here and choose the add modifiers option. I'm going to choose the motion extractor modifier that's built into the engine and I'm going to supply the name for the ball right bone. Additionally, I'm going to add a second motion extractor modifier for the left ball bone. We can set the motion type to translation speed for both modifiers and set the axis to XYZ. I'll now enable the use custom curve name option and for the right ball bone, I'm going to give it the name foot speed underscore r. I'll copy it, paste it into the left, and change the r to l. With those settings set, I'm going to apply the animation modifiers to the animation. Now these animations already have a motion extractor modifier, but for a different bone. So we're going to add these modifiers on and apply them. All right, the modifiers have been applied. So if I open one of these animations, we can see 
that we are tracking the foot speed for each foot. At its lowest, it's down to a value of around 3 or 4, at least for the left foot in this specific animation. So it's not going to be at 0 exactly, but that's alright, because our speed threshold is set above that in our foot placement node. So back in our animation graph, I am going to adjust our speed threshold, and I'm going to give it a value of 10 instead of the default of 60. Additionally, I'm going to Additionally, I'm going to supply the speed curve names for each foot. With that finished, I'll compile, save, and play. And now while we jog, the feet lock even while turning because it is reading from the animation as opposed to the in-world movement of the character. If I turn on slow motion, it is easier to see. You will want to choose the foot placement mode that works best for you, your system, and your animations. Additionally, I've only really applied these to the jog loop animations to keep things somewhat short and simple for this video. However, you'll of course want to apply that animation modifier if you go with the manual mode to more of your locomotion animations as right now foot placement is only in effect if I am playing a jog loop animation while moving around here with this character. I also want to note that you do not need to apply the curve to idle or turn in place animations to have the animation node apply the slope warping and adjustments for standing on uneven surfaces as that is separate from the foot locking based on the speed of the foot's movement.